Hello, and welcome to the webinar. My name is Anna Patterson, and I've been working at the Vienna University of Economics and Business for the last 10 years. Today, I'm very pleased to talk about how to choose an MBA or a Master of Laws program based on the experience I've gathered talking with many students. So I hope that you can get a lot out of this webinar, and I look forward to your questions at the end. To get started, when you select an MBA or a Master of Laws programs, one of the key questions that a lot of people ask is, is it worth it? Is it really worth doing a program? Because it is a serious investment. It costs money and it is an investment in terms of time. Consequently, one of the first questions is, is it going to give me a return on investment? So from that point of view, I would suggest that a large majority of you do some due diligence. If you want to do an MBA or law program, try to find out and be very clear on why you want to do it. Is it only because you want to earn more money? And we have good statistics on this and reports in, in far as how our alumni have managed to increase their salaries substantially. And we can talk about this as it's an independent survey from the Financial Times. So that is one possibility, of course. But I would hope that you have other things in mind when you go about your selection. And the selection for us at the VU Executive Academy is quite basic. And we take this basic very seriously. And we would suggest actually a recipe to go about this. And I'm just going to show you this in a second. Namely, this recipe is basic. Criteria on how to select an MBA include branding, accreditation, selectivity, internationalization, curriculum, and satisfaction. So to start off with branding, there are over 12,000 programs worldwide, and it's a good idea to get settled in the branding of the institutions you're looking at. Is it well known? Is the program going to give you large recognition in your CV after you've completed the program? Do the institutions have enough resources to back them up? At the VU Executive Academy, we are made up of four competence areas from the graduate school, the undergraduate school, competence centers, and also the VU Executive Academy, the Institute here for continuing education. And you can be sure that we are very well known. We are one of the largest business schools in Europe. And along with branding goes the quality of the institution. So it might be a good idea to check out some of the accreditation agencies of the institutions that you're interested in. And there are many, many different quality criteria to look at, of course. We would suggest, however, that you look at the, the main accreditation agencies, AACSB, AMBA, and Equius. They've ranked up, uh, they've rated up to 100 business schools worldwide that have these three accreditations. Rankings also say a lot, and I will come back to that later, but here's a little bit about the rankings we have gained from Financial Times, being in the top 35 worldwide of the executive MBA rankings, to QS, Zero Financiar, and The Economist. So keep B in mind, branding, as you're thinking about your choice. Accreditations are also important, as I mentioned. These were the accreditations here. Now you can see the network that VU as a university belongs to. And Equius is a European accreditation, a European based accreditation agency. AACSB is North American and AMBA is UK based. So it's a quite global accreditation body that looks at our institution and we have to do our homework. We are re-accredited quite often to make sure that our quality stays high. We are also members of different networks, including CIPUS and the PIM network, Yosef, and so on. So we have a lot of faculty that we exchanges in this network to keep the academic research up to date. 
So that was a little bit about accreditations. Now, selectivity is very important for your journey. Think about who you'll be sitting next to in the classroom for the duration of your law or MBA program. We often look for uh, students with three to five years of work experience uh, minimum. However, the average is quite different as you'll see. The average student is around 34 to 35 years old and brings in 11 to 15 years of work experience. Now, the ideal candidate of an executive MBA program would also bring in leadership experience and management experience. So perhaps you've had um, personnel responsibility, you've hired people, perhaps you've even dismissed people. This would be an advantage to you as you come in, as you'll be able to exchange more in the classroom. So definitely get an idea of the profile of the potential classmates you'll be sitting next to in your Master of Law program or your MBA program. Finally, of course, internationalization is a key component for checking out different MBA or law programs. As we can see, internationalization fits in among with the student body. Here at the Wave Executive Academy, we have a fairly international student body. Of, in our English language programs, there is about 70% of students that are not Austrian. So there are 30 countries represented in our professional MBA business core class. And there are around 20 countries represented in the global executive MBA class. Faculty also make up a large international component of the programs. As we fly in faculty members from the United States, be it from Harvard, University of Minnesota, University of South Carolina, where we visit these faculty members on our residencies as we go there. We also invite people um, to teach in our courses that are very hands-on. And we'll get to that in a second with our next criteria. But here is a selection. You can see that our, our faculty members are coming from as well as other countries, including Spain and India and France and Austria. In addition, the international aspect of the alumni club is something that you should be looking into when you're considering a postgraduate program. Where should your network mainly be located in? Are you looking to do a program in Central Europe because you're looking to continue your future in Central Europe? Then your academic uh, alumni network should definitely be based in Central Europe. If you're looking for a more global reach, of course, the Global Executive MBA program is a dual degree program, and they are also alumni, therefore, of the University of Minnesota. So your alumni network would be twofold and based in the North American region and also in Central Europe. So keep that in mind. The VU Executive Club is the name of our alumni club, and we have career services, content, and a special community awaiting students from day one of the program. Now, internationality is also represented, of course, in what we call the international residencies. Some may refer this, to this as field studies. A field study can take place in, for instance, Brazil, but also in the Hong Kong region and in India and Romania. We have here company visits with institutions, companies, organizations on the ground. Here is where students can really exchange ideas and insights with managers. So managers of companies that can be sometimes nonprofit-based or even profit-based startups. That can be quite small to as big as 3M or Estee Lauder. So big name companies in the US are often whom we are visiting as the students are interested in both sides of management. Another topic to keep in mind is, of course, when you're looking at programs, there are many out there, take a look at the curriculum. Make sure that these are the contents, the hard facts in the end that you really want to learn. Do you want your program to be very theoretical or more hands-on? Now, there is a, a long-standing debate on should an MBA be more of a theoretical-based program or a hands-on practical 
program, we like to say we hit the middle ground. We have um, made sure that all our faculty members teaching in the program have some kind of connection to industry. So either they are working in companies or at least as consultants. So they are advising managers on their challenges based on what they do research in the university. So it's really important criteria for you as well as the students we know. And projects are definitely able to be done in the classroom. You can draw on your own projects for your master thesis, for instance, for a project-based work. Um, a homework assignment, for instance, can be done using data from your company. Um, if that's allowed, you can input the data in perhaps a financial tool that you've learned in our financial accounting course, or you can talk about the policy challenges your company is going through as they enter one market into the next and the legal aspects that this may be dealing with. Or you can even talk about the digitization challenges your company is coming across as we move into 2021. Now we also have management insights from guest speakers and company visits introduced in our programs. And in Vienna, we have a very strong entrepreneurial hub, which we invite students to come and visit as they are here. Now, as I mentioned, satisfaction is as well a very important criteria. Satisfaction is in the end what students say. Have I gotten the return on investment? Am I uh, employable in the market? Did I make those career changes I was attempting to get out and accomplish with my Master of Legal Studies program or with my executive MBA or with that professional MBA? And in the end, the alumni are basically our ambassadors. So we work very hard to take their feedback seriously when things are let's say not up to par as with their expectations and make sure this is changes for the next module that they join. And in the end, the students really that you can um, talk to, they can really talk to you about the career changes they've made, the personal developments they've made, the salary changes they've experienced, as well as the feeling of self-fulfillment that they've really gained something out of this intense but manageable experience. And I think if you're considering a program, it's very transparent then of an institution to offer you a conversation with a past alumni. So make sure that you take advantage of such an opportunity. Make sure you get in touch with students or alumni of the program you're interested in and really have a conversation, just, you know, a quick chat perhaps online, but something that gives you the real details, the nitty gritty of this program. And here I'd like to share with you also some statistics based on alumni surveys that we've done to highlight the return on investment. Career changes are a major part of our programs and over 75% of students have had positive career changes after the program. So some of them have joined new companies, but some of them have also started their own companies. 12% of our alumni actually do that within two to three years of graduation. Now, personal development is a huge goal of doing a postgraduate program. We know this, people are already in their careers and they want to gain this added value of the program. So we see that at least with 47% um, of our students being promoted to new positions. Um, this comes in, in as a package with the students who are also changing companies. And people have definitely taken on a leadership leap. So nearly half have taken on additional responsibilities and we have more C-level positions than ever before the programs as um, you can see here. 84% have had higher C-level positions than before their degree. Around 30% um, of a salary increase is what our MBA and law alumni have stated as an average that they have increased their salaries within three years. And the global executive MBA alumni were recently surveyed by the Financial Times their salary has increased on average of 
based on their inputs for that year. So you can see this is also, of course, something we know people consider when they're checking out the return on investment. And finally, alumni definitely feel more confident. We've, we've heard this from women and men alike. They feel very settled in their role. They feel very friendly to taking on risks. They're more aware of the language now that is being spoken at their organizations. By language, I mean the different functional of languages that can have based on the special departments at your company. And I've talked to some alumni. They are now becoming independent advisors. They're um, becoming board members in addition to their current roles. So they're taking on new challenges in other areas that really fulfill their personal interests. And basically, this would be a recipe for selecting an MBA program or a Master of Law programs. Use this basic recipe to make sure you're on the right track. Keep in mind the branding of the institution, accreditation, who is accrediting the institution. Also, how selective are the students um, in the class that you'll be sitting next to, but also how international are the components of your program from the curriculum, the field studies, the international lectures. Check out the curriculum as well. Is, is it going to be a practical program? Is it going to be a, a good balance between practice and theory? Is it also going to include the components that you're interested in learning, of course? And check out as well as testimonials from students. Get in touch with them. Learn from them. Are they really satisfied with the program, with the choice? Would they do it again? And we can get you in touch with, of course, any alumni if you'd like more information from our side on that. I'm happy to have been here for you, and I'd be happy to continue our conversation one-on-one -on -one in a consultation. So stay safe and take care. <laughs>